My goodness, welcome back to another edition of Wrestling Real Talk. This is A.T. Hook, I'm Rudy Hill, and today we are going to talk about, in my eyes and in so many others, one of the greatest professional wrestlers to ever step into the squared circle. Of course, I'm talking about the genius known as The Sheik. Sheik has arrived with a selected member of his harem. She's in the process of spraying her master with a delightful fragrance known as a night in a Parisian market or old sweat socks. The Sheik, the former United States heavyweight champion, the, the one who held the United States championship longer than anybody in all of professional wrestling. Of course, he was the madman from the Middle East. He rained havoc all over the world including in these two guys' lives right here. Let's talk about the Sheik. Oh, Hunk. oh my God. My first memory of professional wrestling is the Sheik. I'm watching television, flicking through channels, and I see this crazy guy eating paper. <laughs> and my sister, Jessie, yeah. I remember asking her, you know, what, you know, I was dumbfounded. I was like, what is this? And she said, you never saw wrestling before? And I was like, no. <laughs> and he was eating a program or something and eating on the guy's tie. And then subsequently I saw him after that just destroying people. Uh -huh. You know, on television, I was just amazed at this phenomenon, yes. you know, of wrestling. Yes. And it was because of what I saw of the Sheik. Now, he was definitely a, a man who was far ahead of his time. Oh yeah. Especially oh, yeah. back there. Tell me, uh, what was your uh, first impression when you got to see him live for the first time? Do you Ooh. remember seeing him live for the first time? I saw several shows at Kobo live. Um, the exact first one, I don't remember. Uh -huh. You know, which one was first. Right. But I saw the Sheik wrestle Luis Martinez. Um, he was supposed to wrestle Bruno San Martino that night. Okay. And Bruno, Bruno didn't show up. You know, they said his father was ill, but of course there was something else that went right, on. Right, right. But the Sheik and Luis Martinez went for almost an hour. Wow. In that match. Wow. Um, that was one of the greatest matches I've ever seen in my life. Wow. You know, and for the most part, Luis Martinez had the Sheik in a headlock. <laughs> But the way they did it, every time the Sheik would get out of it, Louis would grab that headlock, take him back over, and just work that headlock yeah. the whole match. And the Sheik was just limp. Yeah. You know, couldn't recover from that. Right, right. And it was a time limit. It right. went to the time limit. Wow. And, um,. Of course, the next time we went, the Sheik just destroyed Luis Martinez. <laughs> After that, he kicked his butt. Going back, I saw the Sheik wrestle Edouard Carpentier. Yeah. I saw him wrestle Lord Layton. I saw him wrestle Bobo Brazil. I saw him wrestle Lou Klein. I saw him wrestle the Mighty Igor, Tex McKenzie, Pompero Furpo. The list goes on and on. I was going to a lot of those shows at Cobo Arena in yes. the early 70s. Yes. Now, when you were in Georgia during, uh, when you were in college, um, were they still talking about Sheik on Georgia Championship? Or was it ever brought up again in the 80s? Well, the Sheik, if, when, if when I was in Georgia, it. no, there was no talk about Detroit wrestling. Yeah. Um, not until much later. Right. Um, However, one point where I came, I was home for Christmas, and I didn't know at the time, but the Sheik was in Georgia Championship Wrestling. Oh, no! And I missed it because I was here in Detroit. So he was maybe at the Omni? Yeah, he was at the Omni, oh. and he wrestled Buzz Sawyer. Oh, no! I remember when I was in college, um, Thunderbolt Patterson, they ran a rival promotion against Georgia Championship Wrestling at the Omni. Whoa. And it was the Sheik versus um, Thunderbolt Patterson at the Omni in opposition to Georgia Championship. Right. You Do you know? remember the name of the promotion? I don't remember the name of the promotion, and um, I didn't go. Surprisingly, I didn't go. Oh. But they did run against Georgia Championship. Wow. But the Sheik wrestled all over the country before that. Right. You know, he wrestled in Georgia, he wrestled in Florida. 
Um, he wrestled all over Texas. California, Hawaii. Yeah. Um, was Bruno's opponent in in, in New York. Um, he wrestled Pedro Morales. Wow. You know, in California, he was America's champion out that way. Uh -huh. A lot of the Detroit wrestlers wrestled in Los Angeles, Bobo right. Brazil and right. Igor. Right. You know, a lot of them in the Sheik. Sheik, uh, infamous feud with Freddie Blassie. Freddie Blassie and John Tolis. John Tolis. You know, out in California. Um, yeah, in Toronto, the Sheik had one of the longest winning streaks. His winning streak in Toronto may have been longer than it was here in Detroit. That's where he beat up uh, Andre the Sheik. Folks, at this time, the Sheik undefeated in Toronto in seven years. And the fans packed the Maple Leaf Gardens on this night to see the Sheik defeated for the first time in seven years. But as you can there see, it wasn't to be. The fireball, you couldn't see a good shot of it because of the camera angle, but the fire in the face. Right. Yeah, yeah, I don't know if he beat him up. <laughs> you know, Andre, you know, had the majority of the match, but the Sheik threw fire. Uh -huh. You know, I think it was a Texas death match, maybe. Right, right. And, the, and Andre wasn't able to recover from right. that. You know, a lot of people were upset. They just knew the Sheik was going to lose to Andre. It was going to be it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but the Sheik, everybody who came through Detroit, you know, big name wrestled the Sheik. Abdullah the Butcher was somebody that came in and out. You know, he was here in Detroit for a long period, but there wasn't an area that Abby dominated like the Sheik did. Yeah. You know, um, Abby is a legend, you know, without a doubt. Yeah. Um, but he was more popular in certain places. Yeah. You know, the Sheik, everywhere he went, so did Abby. Yeah. But he did, Abby never had a territory that was built around him, yeah. you know, like wouldn't, the Sheik. You wouldn't say, you wouldn't say Puerto Rico? Well, that was Carlos I mean, Colon. Carlos, you know. That was Carlos Colon. Yeah, or, you or know, Japan. Yeah, even he was, Abdullah the Butcher was very popular in Japan, but that was Antonio Inoki and, and Baba. Okay. Were the mainstays. They were the Sheiks yeah. of Japan. So... So, uh, uh, like I said, an Abdullah the Butcher who's kind of was similar to the Sheik style. And, mm -hmm. and, and uh, what, what would you say about a Bruce Brody having the same legacy as the Sheik? Or was his even better? Um, well, it's hard to say. You know, I think the Sheik is an all-time great. He's an all-time great because of what he did here in Detroit you know, makes him maybe a, a step above certain people. Yeah. You know, in that aspect. Um, Bruiser Brody is one of my all-time favorites. You know, everywhere, he was like Abby. Everywhere he went, you know, he was going to make an impact. Mm -hmm. Everywhere he could go, anywhere he wanted to. So Kinda could like Abby. like the Briscoe brothers in this day yeah, and age. Yeah, like, right. You know. Right, like the Briscoe brothers. I, I guess you would say that. You I know? mean, they're, they're going in and they're doing their, doing their thing and, and, and getting out. That's it, you know. Um, I respect that. But Bruiser Brody and Abdullah the Butcher are timeless. You know, the Sheik during his time did all that. Yeah. You know, during the time when Abby and Brody were doing all that, the Sheik was older, he wasn't doing as much right. as he was. He had already submitted his legacy. His legacy. Made his name in professional wrestling by taking cheap shots, by fighting dirty, by bringing all kinds of sharp objects into the ring to use on his opponent. He had already been all over the world and had his promotion, but he was still making an impact. His big match in FMW with, when he teamed with Sabu yeah. in the fire match, oh that was gosh. in the 90s. Yes. Yes. That was in the 90s. Yes. The Sheik started in maybe the late 40s. Right. You know, come on, that's a right. long time. Was Sheik on the level of a world champion? Should he have been a world champion? Who? In, in your eyes, I mean, I mean, I know that that holds a lot of weight, especially uh, like in the late 70s, early 80s, where you had a Flair and you had a Bachwinkle and you had a, you know, uh, I would a Bob Backlund. I would probably say, and it's hard for me to say that, I'd probably say no. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. At that time, when you're talking about the Sheik was up in age. Yeah. And he still had his own promotion. You know, to be world champion, you have to travel and yeah. be all these different places yeah. and and you're obligated to the other promoters. Right. You know, and the Sheik, 
um, was highly respected, but he didn't get along with all these other promoters all the time like that. You know, um, I don't think it would have worked. Yeah. You know, just like I don't think um, Bruiser Brody as world champion may have worked. Yeah. You know, you got to be um, the right guy, the right businessman to be world champion. Got you. You know. Um, would I have loved to see the Sheik as world champion? Oh my God, yes, that would have been crazy. Right. But I don't think that would have worked for everybody. Right. Do you think really the downfall of big time wrestling was the Sheik? And, and, and not, um, not giving a chance to some of the younger talent to maybe uplift the championship and uplift the houses and, and center around some of those young guys that were coming in left and right and he would just like i mean it, it's pretty much the same thing as uh memphis you knew someone was coming in to work lawler mm -hmm. and you knew lawler was going over and subsequently uh, uh, lawler's promotion did the same no mm -hmm. dive. Mm -hmm. does is that fair to say well i think part of it was that you know part of it was the economy you know um here in detroit you know, um, the Sheik did have other champions. You know, yeah. Mark Lewin was champion, Don Kent was champion, Bobo was champion. You know, um, there were other champions here in Detroit. Gino Hernandez was champion. Right. You know, so he did try other things. But my point was, was, was it time where he'd step back? Which, uh, for a man like Sheik, I know is, uh, we both knew him personally. Yeah, yeah. Um, for him to step back and let this run without him for, mm -hmm. a, a, and then make your comeback. Yeah. Do you think that he would ever, that would he, ever work? Well, he didn't. Right. Um, but, but would, it, would it have worked in retrospect? Maybe a Terry Funk helped well, the Well, you know, before. in retrospect, we say, oh man, he should have done this and he should have done that. But some of these, some of those wrestlers like Randy Savage, they weren't, the Randy Savage that we knew later. Right. You know, you would have to be a guru. Right. And say, man, I should let Randy Savage be champion yeah. in 1979. Right, right. You know, who right. knew? Right. You know, Terry Funk had already been world champion, and I think if the promotion had lasted, he may have been in that spot. Right. Uh, we don't know all of the minutiae that was going on at the time behind the scenes with the money and with Kobo yeah. and the contracts, because when they stopped running at Kobo, they were still running. Oh yeah, oh, you yeah. know they were at Lincoln Park mm -hmm. and they were doing other shows. Yeah. They lost their TV spot. Yeah, um, I think when they that went hurt. from channel maybe 50 um, to 62 and some of the other broadcast networks that didn't go as far as their original station they they were on that hurt yeah you know because they were drawing people in from ohio and other parts of michigan were coming to Kobo. Mm -hmm. you know and when you couldn't see it in all those places the the attendance started to dwindle sure you didn't have good sure. tv coverage sure. Sure. um in retrospect yeah we can sit here and be you know armchair quarterbacks <laughs> all we want and say he should have done this and he should have done that right i think yeah the sheik maybe maybe should have teamed up with abdullah and let right. somebody else terry funk or randy savage or austin idol oh, yeah. get their run as U.S. champion instead of Bobo and Igor. Right. You know, they had been around for so long, people kind of got, you know, disenchanted. It got stale, it got stale a little bit. Yeah. You know, I, I remember going to Kobo um, late in my teens, because I kind of fell off at one point, but the Sheik was wrestling Furpo, and I hadn't seen it, you know, in a while. Uh -huh. and I was like, I'm going to see this. And the match lasted two minutes, oh. you know, and I was a little disappointed, you know, I was like, man, you know, man, he beat Furpo that easily, right. and, right. you know, it was right. like, you know, seemed like just a money grab instead of really trying to push the product right. and go forward with anything at that time. Right. Sheik definitely was an influence. Oh, yeah. I'm going to throw some names at you of some other Sheiks, and I'd like to mm. hear the comparison with the Sheik <laughs> and... Let's say Sheik Adnan El Casey. Um, Sheik Adnan El Casey before that was wrestled as a Native American. Okay. You know, there's a match I just watched not long ago with the 
him versus the original Sheik from maybe Hawaii. Okay. And he was, well, I'm going to say Indian. He was an Indian wrestler, yeah. native wrestler. Yeah. And the Sheik just destroyed him. <laughs> um, that was definitely a takeoff on the Sheik. Yeah. You know, it was different than the Sheik. He was a manager. He spoke. Right. You know, and he, you know, managed Ken Patera and Crusher Blackwell. And that was an AWA thing. Yeah. You yeah. know, Sheik Adnan L. Casey didn't take that all over. Right. You know, that was AWA. I mean, How, the, the most know. famous Sheik of all, the Iron Sheik. The Iron Sheik? Um, that didn't bother me too much. You know, he was different than the Sheik. Yeah. You know, I say the Sheik. He was probably a, a better technical wrestler. Better you know? athlete? He was probably a better athlete. Yeah. You know, he was an Olympic wrestler. He yeah. helped train, you know, for the Olympics. Yeah. So he could probably out-wrestle the Sheik. Sure. But I bet if they were booked in a match when the Sheik was in his prime, the Iron Sheik would have been a bloody mess. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. It, you, know, you know, the Sheik, yeah, it would have been a different story, a different... <laughs> what would have been that one dream match that you would have liked to have seen the Sheik happen that never never came to be that never happened with the sheik oh wow i guess it would have to be rick flair you know because the sheik wrestled just about everybody else now weren't they teasing that and i like to hurt people where they were going to wrestle on top of right the renaissance. right they were going <laughs> to wrestle on top of the renaissance that was on a like i like to hurt people yes and, and yeah. then there was a there was a, a, a for those of you who are watching us, there was a, a local television show here in Detroit called Kelly and Company. Mm. And they went on there and they said that the Sheik was going to wrestle Ric Flair at the Pontiac, Pontiac Silver Silverdome. Um, and and uh, you know, that came to... I don't know if there were any real talks with that. Yeah. Was that just hype? You know, was that Flair putting it out there? You right. know, but was there ever any communication with Ric Flair and the Sheik about that match. Right, right. Because I think Ric Flair was all about making money. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, I know he did has talked bad poorly about the original Sheik. Yes, he has. And you that, know, that, I know that. That saddens me. Man. Yeah, really but does. you know, he has opinions about other wrestlers too. Right. That he that he worked with. Right. Right. You know, I don't know if they ever really talked. Right, right. We don't know. We'd have to ask Ric Flair. R no He's doubt. still alive. No doubt. We talk about the Sheik and we talk about the impact that he left in, in the world. Do you think that maybe if, if the Sheik were, if he were to still be here, mm -hmm. what would his views be on, on the world of wrestling today, do you think? Wow. That's kind of hard to say. Um, I think he'd be upset with the workers, as am I. Yeah. You know, I think... That break cafe? Yeah, yeah. I think that a lot of what happens today in wrestling is our fault, as the workers. Um, let the fans think whatever they want to think. That doesn't mean that you have to say it yourself. That's right. You know, magicians, for the most part, don't go out and tell people how they do their tricks. Yes. You know, that hurts their income. Yes. People want to suspend their imagination. They want to believe that you're actually pulling a rabbit out the hat. Yes. You know, or that you're actually sawing somebody in half. Yes. If you know how to do it yourself, why are you going to go pay to see somebody right. do it? Right. You know, you're supposed to maintain that aura of larger than life. Absolutely. You Absolutely. know, and I wish it would, I wish that was, and I would think the Sheik would feel the same. We would be remiss if we didn't mention Sheik's family, who was very much instrumental in his career and in his business. Yes. Of course, Joyce. Joyce, Farhat, his wife. Um, beautiful lady, wonderful soul. Oh, yeah. And, uh, oh, yeah. Someone who I was uh, very fortunate enough to uh, meet and know. Mm -hmm. And um, what were your views on Joyce? Oh, Joyce was great. You know, I, I met her a few times. Yeah. You know, um, when they were in Lincoln Park was the first time I actually met her. And that's when the Sheik gave me this T-shirt. Uh -huh. You know, Joyce was there with him. And then later, um, the Sheik called me on the phone one day. 
Uh-huh. And I was like, this is the sheik calling me on the phone. You know, and he wanted me to meet him and Joyce up near Lansing. Uh-huh. Um, they were, it was before they went to FMW. He needed footage of Sabu. And um, I guess Malcolm told him that I had VHS tapes, mm-hmm. you know, from the Azteca Hall. So me and Esther, my wife, we drove up to Lansing to meet the Sheik and Joyce. Uh-huh. And um, wow, we, they wanted us to go to dinner, but Esther and I, we had just eaten dinner. We had been somewhere right, else. Right. So we, you know, just sat in the parking lot for a while and we talked and, you know, I gave him the tapes to send over to FMW yeah. of Sabu. I don't know if he ever used them or not. Sure. But I gave them to him, and he gave me a body press. Nice. You know, he said he gave me a body press. You and still have it? I still have it. Yeah. One I won't sell because right. he gave it to me just like he gave me this. Right. And then he gave me this. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but um, Joyce was nice, and she and Esther talked, you know, and, you know, it was great. And then I, I met Joyce again. Years later, um, Eddie Jr. Yes. Wanted, him, wanted me to co-promote with him. Okay. He actually wanted me to be his promoter in Detroit. Okay. okay. You know, and I went and met with him and his brother Tom. Tom, yes. And their mother at Tom's auto uh, repair place. Yeah, yeah. And man, I, I gotta say, I, I turned it down, mm-hmm. but I was so honored at the fact that his family came to meet with me yes. for me to be their promoter. Yes. And Frank was there too. I, yes. I always bring Frank with me, uh-huh. you know, and he remembers that to this day and we talked and I just didn't think that it would work. Right. You know, I didn't think that me and Eddie would get along, you know. He had, he had a reputation of not getting along with very many people. What, what were your, your, your initial thoughts on not Ed Farhead Jr., but the performer, the wrestler, Captain Ed George. To be and, honest and, 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 with yes, you. I, I want to hear your honesty. To be opinion. honest with you, during that time when um, Captain Ed George was wrestling, I had fallen off. Okay. And I wasn't watching. Um, I didn't see him until I like to hurt people. Okay. That I remember. Right. You know, I wasn't watching that much. Right. But um, what I saw and I like to hurt people, I liked it. You know, he was wrestling Don Kent. Don Kent, yes. Yeah, that, that was good. Yes. Now, from everybody's opinion that was there at that time, mm-hmm. didn't think that much of his wrestling ability. Right. I didn't right. get to know Eddie Jr. until years later. Right. You know, when he started r- promoting again. Right, right. And, um, man, he was a different cat. <laughs> you know, um, I don't know if this has been said on, on film or not. And, Rest in peace. Yes. You yes. know, I remember um, going up to Flint, I believe. Mm-hmm. And um, I was there with Monty Brown. Okay. You know, I had taken Yukon Braxton there. Right. And um, I think Sabu asked me to take him up there, and I went, and I was going to referee. Sabu told me to referee, and, and Eddie kind of blew me off, uh-huh. you know. But I was kind of <laughs> taken aback at that. But I remember he, he was talking to... Monty Brown. Okay. And he wanted Monty Brown to do this gimmick, and he said, I want to call you Spear Chucker. And then Monty, we looked at each other like, is he out of his mind? Right. And Monty was like, no. And Eddie was clueless. He didn't see what, what was wrong right. with that. Right. You know? But he wanted to call Monty Brown Spear Chucker. Oh, my goodness. You know, which definitely was, you know, right. Right. something that wouldn't go right. over very Not well. Not at all. Not you at know? all. But he had crazy ideas like that, like Hot Stuff Rivera. Mm-hmm. He was using names from the past. Right, right. You know, calling well, people wildfire. Well, wait and, a minute. He, he, he almost crossed the line when trying to make a young guy be uh, sweet daddy. Let, you know, let's yes. talk about that because yes. uh, I'll tell you what, man. Immediately when I seen that and I heard that. Well, I, let's be honest. It was Kadeem Muhammad. It was Kadeem Muhammad. And I, yeah. and I, and I yeah. reached out to him and I said, let me tell you something, man. If you take on that... You're gonna have a real problem with a lot yeah. of people, including me. Well, you weren't the only one. I reached out to him and I told Kadeem, I was like, you don't know me very right. well. I don't know if you've heard of me before, but don't do that. Right. You know, you cannot do that. Right. It was disrespectful. Right. Even though there were other sweet daddies, there were sweet daddy seeking. Yes. yes. But here in Michigan, and I think that was 
taking a jab at Sweet Daddy Malcolm Monroe or DBA at the time. Right. Because this is when Sweet Daddy had passed already. Right, right. And to it, call this young black wrestler in Michigan Sweet Daddy. Right. You know, right, right. and of course, Kadeem, on his behalf, he didn't do it. He didn't. He didn't. He didn't do and it. I, I commend him for that. But Eddie, you know, he made different, you know, bad decisions. Yeah. There's a whole thing, and I think it might be an episode on Big Time Memories right now, where the box office was robbed. Was robbed. Oh, yeah. You know, and there's speculation, you know, that Eddie had something to do Shout with that. Shout out to Big Time Memories, Terry Big Sullivan, Time Memories. and uh, uh, Dave Drayson. Oh, my God. You're not going to believe it. The box office has been robbed. Oh, there is no money. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, back to the Sheik. Back to though. the Sheik. Um, the Sheik, um, when he was young, Sheik was very fast. Very fast. Man, he would jump over the ropes, out to the ring, on back into the ring, out to the floor. Oh, yeah. He was all over the place. Oh, yeah. And then he evolved. Because early Sheik was not using foreign objects and, and throwing right. fire. Right. You know, he was wrestling. Right. You know, I, right. I watched a match just the other day with, was it the Guru or Tom Jones? Okay. Maybe the Guru. Okay. And the Sheik beat him with a hammerlock, a flying oh. hammerlock. He just oh. kept flipping over and flipping over, holding on to that hammerlock. Uh -huh. And he submitted. It wasn't wow. the camel clutch. Wow. You know, the Sheik wrestled. Right. You know, early on. And right. then he evolved and changed where he started doing all the crazy stuff with the with the pencil and throwing fire and yeah. wrapping yeah. a hanger around the guy's neck. You know, right. all that crazy. He was hardcore, ultraviolet, yeah. you know. But there was still nothing that was going to hurt you physically. Right. You know, by flying over the top rope through tables. Right. They didn't do all of that back then. They may have used a table, but it was in a different way. Sabu, of course. Let's talk a little bit about Sabu. Let's talk about, um, uh, we both were exposed to Sabu around the same time. I mean, mm -hmm. really exposed. It really exposed him to get to know him. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, um, your views on Sabu and, and should Sabu be in the Hall of Fame? Oh, wow. Into business and promoters. Mm -hmm. However, let's not... Let's not uh, um, uh, face the fact that he changed wrestling. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I'd say Sabu should be in the Hall of Fame. He contributed a lot to professional wrestling when he was in the main, when he was in the limelight. Yeah. You know, a lot of guys patterned themselves after Sabu. Rob Van Dam patterned himself after Sabu. Yes. You know, even though, you know, um, Rob came into his own and did his own thing. You know, Sabu helped train Rob. Yeah. But a lot of the wrestlers that came along later, everybody who broke a table, you know, the way they broke tables got it from Sabu. Right. Um, Sabu, I, you know, had many conversations with him, and he went to the WWE, went to WCW. Yeah. And the WWE, they wanted to change his gimmick. Yeah, they did. And he w didn't want to change his gimmick. He was going to be the Sultan. Which, yeah, which yeah, became, and then, but know. they also um, <clears throat> excuse me <clears throat> shot a a, a a gimmick to him for he was more like a street fighter. Oh no! Yeah, he was like a street fighter. Yeah, you know, um, maybe bandana and and that type of thing, and he didn't want to change his gimmick. Right, right. You know, which I think they frowned upon. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So he didn't get the push there that he expected. And then. You know, I love Sabu, but sometimes his matches are hit or miss. Oh, yeah. You know, oh, yeah. and he would do things where they might call it, what do they call it now? Botch. You know, botch. but Sabu, if he quote unquote botched something, he'd go back and do it again. Yeah. You know, but um, I remember his match with Rey Mysterio, which was phenomenal, you know, and that was the best match I remember him having. I'll tell you, one of the you know, matches that I thought was there, amazing. They didn't let him do his thing. Right. One of the matches that I thought was amazing was him against John Cena. John Cena. That what a was match, good. Man. That was good. What a But for match. some reason, they didn't let, let him go. Yes. Like they sh should have let him go. And any final, final words that you would like to say about the greatest, Ooh. dare I say the greatest, you, you say Ric Flair, I say Sheik. Well, I mean, the Sheik is my all-time favorite. Yeah. He's my all-time favorite. Yeah. 
you know, but our conversation, who was the greatest, I still have to say it was Ric Flair. Fair enough. But the Sheik is my all-time favorite. Fair um, without the Sheik, I wouldn't have the love for professional wrestling that I have today. You know, um, when I go looking for wrestling on YouTube, I look for Sheik. I very rarely go looking for Ric Flair matches. <laughs> right, right. But I want to see, man, can I find some old big time wrestling that yeah. I haven't seen with the Sheik versus Johnny Valentine or Pompero Furpo. Yeah. You know, I love it when I come across something of the Sheik that I haven't seen. Yeah. Which is very rare. Right. You know, I had a, con a conversation with the Sheik about old tapes. Uh -huh. And this is what he told me because everybody's Everybody asking wants about it. This came from the Sheik's mouth. He said he took out his back seat of his Cadillac and filled it up with, with tapes that he had out in his storage unit. Uh -huh. And he took them to Florida to Pedro Martinez. Okay. This is what the, came out the Sheik's mouth and, the, and he sold them to Pedro Martinez. And Pedro, I don't know, he died or right, whatever. I don't right. know who has all that that the Sheik took down there in his car. Wow. If there still exists or whatever. But the Sheik told me this from his mouth to my ears. Right. That that's what happened to a lot of those tapes. Wow. Some of them deteriorated yeah. in his storage unit. Some of them were taped over back yeah. in the day. Yeah. Yeah. But he did take a lot down there to Florida. Right. Now, who has them now? I hope they pop up somewhere. Right, they preserve them some way, yeah. somehow. Uh, again, final words on One of the greatest of all time, you know, definitely an icon here in Michigan, California, Japan. Um, I don't think there'll ever be another like him. No way. Never. No way. Well, there you have it. It's been wrestling real talk with A.T. Hook and Rudy. We'll see you next time right here on Rocks TV.